Tilda Swinton's unique and androgynous looks have given her the label of Hollywood's most intoxicating weirdo. The actress, who admitted that she had tried to kill her baby brother, has a knack for playing the most villainous roles amongst other interesting characters in film. From the devious White Witch in Narnia to the all-knowledgeable Ancient One in Doctor Strange. But what you might not know is that it's not just her looks that are unconventional, but her relationships too. The actress was rumored to have an open relationship with the father of her children and her boyfriend. While that might not strike you as odd, they all seem to live happily under the same roof. To add to her very complicated love life, Swinton shocked fans by coming out as queer at almost 60 years old. Buckle your seats, juicers, because what we're about to tell you today will have you thinking about relationships in a completely different way. When it comes to Hollywood, Rumor Juice has got you covered. Just remember to hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel for more. The actress met artist and playwright John Byrne back in the 80s, and the two fell in love. It wasn't long after that that their relationship brought a set of twins into the world. Although the actress kept much of their personal life private, their long-lasting relationship left many wondering whether they had secretly married and were now building a family together. But when the two broke up, it was clear that they had never tied the knot and just happened to have what many considered a strange relationship. Let's see what other people think, but we don't really care if they don't. But of course, when they like it, then it's a huge, huge relief. Tilda was spotted with another man who was 19 years younger than she is. Soon, it was confirmed that Swinton was dating German-born artist Sandro Kopp. The news left fans shocked as it seemed as though the actress was having an affair with Kopp. Tilda was away from her family filming The Chronicles of Narnia when she and Sandro began seeing each other. The pair may have found love, but it came at the cost of someone else's heartbreak. Sandra's then-girlfriend of four years, Emma Williamson, revealed that the artist brutally broke up with her via email from the Narnia set after being mesmerized from meeting Tilda. It was awful. I was on my knees on the banks of the Nile, sobbing with my sister holding me. At least he could have ended it with me, even on the phone, before he cheated with her, Sandra's ex said, adding that he begged her not to tell anyone as he desperately wanted to protect Tilda's children and career from such a scandal. So what about Tilda's long-life partner, John? How did he cope with the news? It turns out he took it pretty well. Just moments into dating, it was revealed that Tilda's new boyfriend had moved into the family home that she shared with John, father of her children. This isn't something you hear every day, and Tilda's reaction to the whole situation left even more jaws hanging. We are all a family, she has said. What you must also know is that we are all very happy. As awkward as it may have been, it was necessary for them to share the same home. She and John were co-parenting and had their children to think of. We are in this very, I think, very unexotic situation that lots of people are in, which is that I have children with one wonderful man, and uh, you're we very close. Very and close. Well, how, how could we not be? We have, uh, we have uh, these beautiful children. This arrangement also came in handy when the actress traveled with Cobb for her career, as John would stay home with the kids. One can only imagine how the children felt in that type of situation. Did they have to call Sandro dad too? Whatever the kids' thoughts, their mother did what she thought was best for them. Since having to make such changes and adjustments for her kids, the actress discovered that there is a lot that she has to sacrifice for her children. And time is one of those things, even if it meant living out the most uncomfortable double date scenario. Swinton grew up in boarding schools and recalled it being one of the worst experiences of her life. And it's for that reason that she is not a Harry Potter fan. The boarding school experience and harsh bullying, which the actress says movies like that romanticize, left her scarred for years. The torment and loneliness that formed from being away from her family broke something inside her, which caused her not to speak for almost five years when she was younger. So if she has to withstand smooching her boyfriend in front of her ex-lover just so her children have both their parents around, then so be it. It's pretty clear that three is not a crowd in this family. Fans can't help but wonder, where do they draw the line? Just as Tilda had Sandro, John later found love with a lighting director who also joined the family. We have not hidden away and Janine is very much part of my life. Tilda knows all about it and is more than happy with the situation. John shared about his new relationship. It seems the only people who were rattled by Swinton's living situation at the time was the public. However, those close to the pair had been filled in on the arrangement. John shared that his new lover had not only met his own family, but Swinton and her lover too. I wouldn't say we all socialized together, but she has met Sandro and we have all been under one roof together, he revealed. I know some people will struggle to understand it, but it works for us. So, does that mean she would sleep over too? 
John has since moved out of their cohabitating household, so we'll never know. But he is still a frequent visitor. Swinton shared that she never thought it was taboo for him to be around and still stands by it. When reporters tried to press the actress about her relationship, concluding that her previous living arrangement was an open marriage, she quickly debunked the rumors. I don't have a husband. I've never been married, she told reporters. I have children with someone else, with whom I'm bringing up my children, and I've lived with someone else, my sweetheart, for the last three years. And maybe it's extraordinary that we're really all friends. She added that life does not have to be complicated, and people tend to complicate things that could be so simple, urging people to be compassionate and to not be hard on themselves when things do get complicated. So it was no wonder when the actress came out as queer now at 60 years old without the worry of it complicating her life or relationship. The world of, uh, of uh, queer culture is incredibly familiar to me. It's been my, it was the, my first uh, home when I, when I entered the world of art. The actress revealed in an interview with British Vogue that though she may be well on her way to her senior years, this was not a new discovery for Swinton. I'm very clear that queer is actually, for me anyway, to do with sensibility. I always felt I was queer. I was just looking for my queer circus, and I found it. And having found it, it's my world. And it seems like the whole world knew it too. After Swinton's coming out news made headlines, many took to Twitter to express their reaction, with most saying that the news was unsurprising. Her androgynous looks and non-conforming lifestyle led many to believe that the actress was just private about her identity. Nonetheless, fans were still over the moon for the actress. One user joked that it's incredibly problematic of Tilda Swinton to come out as queer without also personally proposing to me. The actress shared that since coming out, she has found other creatives, the likes of Wes Anderson and Bong Joon-ho, that have formed as part of her family. Swinton was never one to be put into a box. Her life is a testament to her peculiar nature. An article even considered the actress Hollywood's most intoxicating weirdo because she lives her life boldly and is unapologetic about it. In fact, the only box the actress has ever been in was one that she voluntarily put herself in. I've, I've never been comfortable describing myself as an actor or anything particularly. Back in the 90s, Tilda, who also expressed herself as a model and performance artist, hosted an exhibition where she slept in a glass box in a London museum the entire night. The performance piece was just made up of her sleeping on a white mattress, which the audience glared at through the glass walls. From taking a nap in front of strangers to confessing that she contemplated murdering her own brother, Tilda is not one to go with the crowd. One of the strangest things Swinton ever admitted in an interview was a memory she recalled of wanting to end her baby brother's life. At just four years old, the actress was frustrated with the sibling rivalry that forms when there is a newborn. But instead of the malicious intent the actress had, after a turn of events, she was praised for being her brother's hero. I remembered when I was four or five, I tried to kill my own brother, she said in the interview. I went into his room to kill him, saw some ribbons from a bonnet going into his mouth, and began to pull them out, and I was discovered saving his life. So I had this strange reputation, my brother's savior, and no one knew I wanted to kill him. Now we understand how she lands those villainous roles. It was in her all along. Tilda Swinton does not live her life through a textbook. The actress creates her own reality, which she is very much content and happy in. She may be scrutinized for her lifestyle and choices, but it's better to embrace who you are than pretend to be someone else for the sake of what others will think. If anything, Swinton's peculiar nature is encouragement for everyone out there to just be themselves.